Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, in our previous grammar lessons, we talked about coordinating conjunctions. Remember, coordinating means that they take two complete thoughts and link them together. They take one sentence and another sentence, and by adding a comma and that coordinating conjunction, it takes both of those independent sentences and combines them into one complete thought, one complex sentence. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at subordinating conjunctions, which are also conjunctions. They also take two different thoughts, two different things, and combine them into one complete sentence, one complex sentence, but they're slightly different from our uh, coordinating conjunctions. And remember, with coordinating conjunctions, we were looking at the seven conjunctions that spelled out fanboys but with subordinating conjunctions, it's gonna be slightly different. So in your grammar notebooks, I want you to open up to the next clean page and right at the very top, subordinating conjunctions. Our definition of subordinating conjunctions, subordinating conjunctions are words that link independent clauses and dependent clauses to create complex sentences. So I want you to hit pause on the video right now and write down, Subordinating conjunctions are independent clauses and dependent clauses to create complex sentences. I'll wait. Now you may be asking yourself, Mr. Hubner, what is an independent clause and what is a dependent clause? Well, an independent clause means that it is something, independent means something that can function on its own. Uh, we just came through the Christmas season. One of my most favorite Christmas movies is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the old, old, old one. And that's something that Hermie the Elf always says, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be independent. And then Rudolph's like, oh, I'll be independent. Too. And, and then Hermie said, let's be independent together. Independent means that something doesn't need someone else. It can function on its own. So a clause is one that has a subject and a predicate and could exist as a complete sentence. A dependent clause needs something else. A dependent clause needs some help from another clause in order to be a part of a complete sentence. It would be considered a sentence fragment. Either it's missing a subject, missing a predicate, or it just, it needs something else in order to be a part of a complete thought. It's an incomplete thought. So an independent clause can function on its own as a sentence, but a dependent clause needs to be combined with something else in order to be a sentence. So supporting any conjunctions are words that will link an independent clause and a dependent clause to create a complex sentence. This is different from a coordinating conjunction because a coordinating conjunction linked up two complete thoughts or two independent clauses. Subordinate conjunction has an independent and a dependent. Let's see what we're talking about here. So if I give you the sentence, we can eat apple pie after we finish dinner. In this complex sentence, I have two different clauses two different sets of a subject and a predicate, a subject and a predicate. One can function on its own, one cannot. So if I take, we can eat apple pie, that if I put a period after apple pie, that could exist as its own sentence. We finish dinner. We as the subject, finishes the predicate, but it's missing something. So we have, we can eat apple pie is our independent clause. The subordinating conjunction tells when we can eat apple pie after we finish dinner. After we finish dinner, we can eat apple pie. The same two clauses, but reversed. The subordinated conjunction is still after. After we finish dinner is still the dependent clause. We can eat apple pie is the independent clause because we can eat apple pie could exist on its own as a complete thought. After we finish dinner is 
existing to tell us when we can eat the apple pie. When can we eat apple pie? After we finish dinner. The kids stopped talking once the movie started. Our independent clause, the kids stopped talking. Once is our subordinating conjunction telling when the kids stopped talking after the movie started. So the kids were talking, they were talking, talking, movie started. Once the movie started, the kids stopped talking. And you can see if you flip the order, it still works, but we need to start that, in, that dependent clause with our subordinating conjunction. Once, once the movie started, the kids stopped talking. Once is our subordinating conjunction. Once the movie started, our dependent clause. And then the kids stopped talking is our independent clause. And between my dependent clause and my independent clause, I'm still separating them with a comma. But depending on the order, if I have the independent clause first, it's comma, subordinated conjunction, dependent clause. But if I switch the order and start the sentence with the subordinated conjunction, it goes subordinated conjunction, dependent clause, comma, independent clause. Now, in Schoology, you have what's called sketch notes. And on the page, you're also taking notes in your notebook, but this is something that you're going to be turning into me as proof that you've actually done what you've been asked to do. And you will know that you have to do that if you are watching this video. So thank you for following directions. Thank you for doing what you're supposed to. So at the top of your sketch notes where it says definition, that's where I want you to type in the definition. Now, subordinated conjunctions, I already part, wrote part of it. They express four basic relationships between the independent clause and the dependent. Time, cause and effect, contrast, and condition. So three C's and a T. Cause and effect, contrast, condition, and then the T is time. We've already seen a couple examples of time, after, once. But in your sketch notes, I want you to write the definition, and then you're going to type in some of the example words that we give for time, cause and effect, contrast, and condition. The first condition is time. Some subordinating conjunctions is, express a relationship with time. So in your, in your notebook, I want you to write that down. The first one is time. As soon as the bell rings, the students will line up for class. You should wash your hands before you eat any food. So we've got as soon as, before, other conjunctions that express time. After, as, until, while, when. These are all examples of subordinating conjunctions that express time. So anytime you come across something that, like, that expresses like something happening before, something happening after, something happening during, that is a subordinating conjunction. So you can hit pause on the video and write down the, this list of con subordinating conjunctions under time. Our next relationship, some subordinate conjunctions express cause and effect and show why something is happening. Since I ride the bus to school, I didn't have to walk in the rain. Our independent clause here, I didn't have to walk in the rain. The dependent clause, the one that is responsible or needs the ind independent, since I ride the bus to school, that shows why something is happening. I left the party early because I wasn't feeling well. Now, if you notice something, our subordinating conjunctions are similar to our coordinating ones. Um, we've used the word because before. We've also used the word for when we're combining two complete thoughts. But being used as a subordinating conjunction, it's combining an independent cause, a complete thought with a dependent clause. I left the party early because I wasn't feeling well. It shows a cause and effect relationship. Other 
conjunctions that show cause and effect, whenever, whether, so that, if, as if, in order to. So I want you to hit pause on the video again and write down these coordinating conjunctions. Our third one that we're going to, group that we're going to be talking to about, some subordinated conjunctions can express contrast, like how things are different. While I would love to stay, I need to get back home. Lou is very stubborn, whereas Kim is flexible and open-minded. You have two different people, Lou very stubborn, Kim flexible and open-minded. So the word whereas shows the difference. In our first one, I would love to stay, I need to get back home. The word while there is kind of acting like the word but. It's showing that the person wants to stay, but they need to get back home. While I would love to stay, I need to get back home. Other conjunctions, although, even though, rather than, even if, though. And what we're seeing here in our groups of subordinating conjunctions, some of them are one word, some of them are a group of words, but that group of words like rather than, even if, they act as our subordinating conjunction to show contrast, to show how things are different. So hit pause again to write down these ones. All right, now for our last set of subordinated conjunctions. We've seen ones that are time, cause and effect, contrast, and now some conjunctions express conditions that must be met. Like in order for something to happen, this needs to go happen. If it starts to rain, the umpire will cancel the game. Sienna can't read the book unless she wears her glasses. This is showing the conditions. In order for Sienna to read the book, she needs to wear her glasses. The umpire will cancel the game if it starts to rain. Otherwise, the game's gonna go on. So it shows a list of things that need to happen, a list of conditions. And our last set of conjunctions, once, now that, whenever, so long as, provided that. But I see that word once. Doesn't once also tell time? If you're thinking to yourself, yeah, it does tell time, you're correct. Each of these groups of conditions, it's not like separate groups. Like it's like a word is only going to express a condition. A word is only gonna show compare and contrast. A word is only gonna show time. Depending on how it's used, a word can fit into a bunch of those four main groups, but the groups kind of like work together. They're all subordinating conjunctions. They're all showing that they're all trying to combine an independent clause, one that can work by itself, and a dependent clause, one that needs the independent clause. So for today, what I want you to do is make sure that your notebook is filled out, make sure that your sketch notes are filled out. And when you turn that in, you'll receive credit for co completing your classwork for today. Have a great rest of your day. And we're going to talk some more about subordinating conjunctions in the very, very near future.